Hi friends, my name is Akhil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial I will show you how to load data from a CSV file that has extra delimiter in it. So this is my profile, IU 13 plus years of experience on Microsoft technologies. So the agenda of today's video tutorial is how we can load data from CSV file that has extra delimiter. So recently I got the question from one of my subscriber Loknath and he asked for the similar thing. So I thought to make a video on this one. So let's jump to the demo. I got a CSV file emails.csv in my D files location and if I open the file and it seems like it contains data so for some persons their ID, first name, last name, email and gender. So the CSV file contains 1000 records. Let me just show you like loading this file into the SQL server table. So I also have a SQL server table email in the work database. So this email table also contains the same five columns and we will be loading the data from the CSV file to this particular email table. So first of all let me just load the data using a data flow task and let me show you for example if you have extra delimiter then how it will behave. So there is one important thing that if you are working for the older version of SSIS for example this SSIS version is SSIS 2019 and it can handle the extra delimiter but the data will be shifted so I will show you like how data will look like so data will be shifted if you have the extra delimiter so let me just load the file uh, browse the file email.csv and I can click on preview so the columns looks good here I can click ok ok and I will be using the OLEDB destination here to load the data into a SQL server table let me make a new connection I already have a connection here and I can select data access mode to table or be fast load so that it can do a bulk insert and then I can select the email table to which I want the data to be loaded the input and destination columns looks good here I can click OK so let me execute the SSIS package and it should load 1000 records to the SQL server table so it seems good here the package ran fine and now let me tr try to fetch the data from the SQL server table so you can see that 1000 records got loaded now let me just truncate this table okay? and let me just open my csv file email.csv file in a text editor and suppose if I do some changes for example I added an extra delimiter comma is a delimiter here so I ex added an extra delimiter here in the beginning of the file for the record number 2 and for example for record number 10 I added the delimiter here okay? so I added 2 extra delimiter in 2 records and now let me just try to load this data again using the same data flow task so it seems like the package got failed and uh, it invalid character value for cast specification okay the value could not be converted because of a potential loss of data so this got failed so let me show you why the package got failed the reason is that for record number two because the extra delimiter is in the beginning of the record so before the beginning it took the ID as blank and because an ID cannot be blank it's an integer so it can have only valid values only the numeric values it can accept or a null value it can accept but because it's an empty value so that's why the package got filled and uh, let me check the data like if we got any data so you know nothing got loaded into the SQL server table before the SQL server 2019 and uh, I have some packages in SSIS 2008 and the issue is that for example if you have extra delimiter then you might have seen this particular error the delimiter for column is not found you know flat file source error column delimiter not found so this is one of the very known error in SSIS if you are working for some time so I have seen this error a lot so this error comes if you have an extra delimiter in your file so how we can handle the extra delimiter that we have in our file so what we want is that the whatever number of records are in the file only the valid record should be loaded to the SQL server table for example in my file I have 1000 records and 2 records are the bad records and 998 records are the good ones so what I want is that when my SSIS package runs then 998 good records should be loaded to the SQL server table email table and those 2 bad records should be actually insert it to a flat file maybe I can call the flat file anything like bad data so that those two records should be moved to the to a new flat file so that I can just send back those records to the client that these records are not good 
or maybe I can check myself like what's wrong with those two records and then I can fix it and maybe I can just reload that file again I mean I can reload those bad data again so that's what I wanted from this SSIS package so this thing we will do using a script task so let me just uh, disable this particular data flow task and uh, let me just drag and drop the script task into the control flow window I have implemented this particular solution in my project so I think it works fine I have used it for many different type of file and every time it works fine so I can call it like load data I can open it click on edit I need to click on edit script so that the script editor will be opened up in the Microsoft Visual C Sharp language okay so I already have the code written here and I will share the code with you so you can just download the code from the link that I will share in the description of the video and then you can use it in your environment so I can just close this one and let me just copy the code so this is the code and I will briefly explain you the code so that you know what is going behind so I just pasted the code here so we are getting some errors here for example this is one of the error that we are getting and if I scroll down then yeah we are getting some more errors so let me just fix these error first of all so if I hover my mouse on this one so there is an option show potential fixes so I will click this one using microsoft.visualbasic.file.io so I did this one and a DLL microsoft.visualbasic has been added and a namespace should also have been added here so this is added so that's good the error has gone and if I scroll down more so now there is one more error here that it is unable to identify the file class so I can click on show potential fixes and I can add this namespace system.io so that it can recognize this particular class now it is giving some more error SQL connection so I can click on show potential fixes using system.data.sql client so now all errors are gone and now let me just explain you the code a bit and then we can just run this particular SSIS package so what exactly we are doing here we are just using an SSIS variable where file name that should have been created in the SSIS package and from this particular where file name this is actually used to access the path of the email file email.csv file that we are going to load so you can load any file so whatever csv file you are going to load that file name should be provided to this particular ssis variable now what we are doing delimiter is the comma delimiter so for example if you have some other delimiter like pipe delimiter or some other delimiter so you need to use that particular delimiter here okay and now it is saying that has fields enclosed in quotes are are fields enclosed in double quotes so if it is true then you can say true here otherwise this will be false so in my csv file the fields are not enclosed in the double quotes now we are just reading everything from the file and what we have done here we have declared the columns here so if i open the file and show you like what file contains so it contains five columns ID first name last name email and gender so there are five columns here and the ID is of type integer so that's why we have declare ID of type integer first name last name email gender here we are creating a data table here and just adding all the five columns here so you can check your CSV file and accordingly you can define the column name here and then you can just add all the columns to your data table so if you see the ID is of type integer so we have put int here but the first name is of type string so we have put a string here and all the four columns are of type string so that's why we have used the string here now we are just trying to read everything from the CSV file and this is one of the most important thing that the fields dot length equal to 5 so in my CSV file I have five columns here 1 2 3 4 5 so because I have the five columns here so that's why I have written the number five here if in your CSV file you have some other number of columns so you can just write the column numbers here now what exactly we are doing here we are just getting everything from the array so the array start from 0 1 2 3 4 5 so everything contains in the fields array and then in the zeroth position I mean the first position we have the ID 
so you can see in the file in the first position we have the id so that's why i have given the value 0 here and then the second position we have first name third position we have last name and then email and gender and then we have declared a data row here and then in the data row we have just given the name of all the columns like id first name last name email gender and then we are adding the row to the table so this is for actually checking the delimiters as well like how many delimiters are in a particular row so because there are five columns so there should be five delimiters as well so if there will be five delimiters then we will add that particular row to the data row and we will add it to a table that we will further insert into the sql server and if the delimiters are not five delimiters so suppose if there are six delimiters then what we will do we are just declaring a variable here and then we will append everything to that particular string and then we will append all that particular line to, to the bad data.txt file so it will create a bad underscore data.txt file in the d files location so at the moment in the d files location we don't have any bad data.txt file but it will create a bad data.txt file here and then it will append that particular row that has extra delimiter or less delimiter to this particular file so this is what we are doing here and then we are just declaring a SQL connection here so my SQL server 2019 instance name is this one so you need to provide your instance name here and my database name is work so you need to provide the database name accordingly and I'm using the trusted connection I'm in the Windows authentication so that's why I have put this particular connection string and now just making a SQL connection and using the SQL bulk copy so that the data can be inserted quickly so there is one more method that you can just insert one row at a time but I'm just doing the SQL bulk copies so this method is very fast now what we are doing here we are just giving the name of the destination table like in this particular connection in the work database we are going to insert the data to the email table and then we can just do the column mappings here so we want to insert the id the id that we declared here so we want to insert this id you know these columns like id first name last name so we want to insert this id into the id of the sql server table name so we got this id here and similarly we want to insert the first name to the first name last name to last name email to email gender to gender so we want to just do this one and then we are just opening the sql connection writing everything to the sql server table and then just closing the connection and in the catch we have put the catch thing so for example if any error will occur then it will come inside this particular catch but right now i have not written any code here if you want to log the errors as well then you can write you can just simply you know copy this thing from here for example and you can put this one here and you can write this thing like error message so for example if any error will come so it will be written to the d files error message and what we want to write we want to write ex dot message so what i can do ex dot message dot to string i think it's of string type so it will take it so now what will happen if any error will occur so that particular error will be logged to this particular file error message dot txt so i think i have explained you most of the things from this particular code but if you still have any question then you can email me on akil33 at gmail.com so let me just close this one and yeah one important thing that let me just copy the name of the SSIS variable where file name from here and let me exit this one and now what we need to do we need to copy the variable name here where file name and I can click on ok and now we need to declare a new SSIS variable I can paste the name here the data type will be of a string and I need to provide the file name here the source CSV file that we want to load so the file name is email.csv I can copy it from here and now I can paste the value here so this seems good as of now let me open the SSMS so at the moment we don't have any data loaded to the email table and also we don't have the error data .txt file here so now what should happen because I have added the extra delimiters to two records so now this second record and the tenth record so now what should happen that these two records should be migrated to a file error underscore data dot txt and rest 998 records should be loaded to the email sql server table so let me just execute my ssis package so the package ran fine 
and uh, if I try to fetch data from the email table, so it contains 998 records and if you see the ID number 2 record is missing and the ID number 10 record is also missing. And if I go to the my D files location, so I can see the bad underscore data dot txt file here. And for example, if I open this particular file, so you can see that we got those two bad records, the record with the extra delimiter in the beginning and the records with the extra delimiter after the first name. So I think this is what we wanted. So now we can just analyze these two records like what went wrong with these two records and we can fix these two records and we can reload this one. The best thing with this process is that now our package did not fail. So for example, if you have 10 million records or maybe 50 million records and you got some f just few bad records, so your package won't fail. The package will run successfully and the bad records will be migrated to a new file that you can just take a look and you can identify it and you can just load that small records later. So your package will run continuously. So I think that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button, do subscribe to our channel, press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much.